Actually, I changed my mind. Let's show the complete proof, but let's do it differently from what the textbook does. So far we have proved this with the only inconvenience that here we have S, S instead of T. And the statement of the theorem is with T. But now we observe the following. What, what is this? This is generalized eigenspace of operator S with respect to a number lambda 2. We can even assume this lambda 2, lambda 3, pa 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 lambda m are the same as the eigenvalues of t, because as we observed before, eigenvalues of S must be eigenvalues of t. And if there is some eigenvalue of t which happen to be not an eigenvalue of S, it's okay. It just, you just mean that this space here is the zero space. Okay. It, it would be this space here. And we only need to make one observation, is that this is a subspace. Okay. The generalized eigenspace of operator S with respect to the number lambda j will be the generalized eigenspace of the num operator T with respect to the same number. Because Ts is just a restriction of T to the smaller subspace. And because V, this the sum of subspaces equal V, the sum of larger subspaces also has to equal V. And on the other hand, we have proved that linear eigen, generalized eigenvector corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are linearly independent, which means that this sum here actually is a direct sum. And this concludes the proof. The theorem is proved.